Well, we'll definitely be talking through diet and sleep and some of what we would refer to as the basics. But um, the cool thing about this, as opposed to an in-home session, is that you get the one-on-one, -on -one, but then you get to watch through everybody else's mistakes too. <laughs> so, um, which is a, probably one of the most valuable lessons. So even as Jamie and I training, I'll make a lot of mistakes, she'll catch and vice versa. And so we can use that opportunity to help solidify what just happened and how to correct it. And so you'll really remember what those little tiny details are that make the big difference. And then you'll also be able to watch somebody else make those tiny little details that you might've just been coached through to be able to help that really solidify. So it's a, it's a neat way to maximize the time we have together and get the, the biggest results. So let's start with Kinder. What is, what's Kinder's current diet? Uh, he's primarily pellets. Okay. And what, what pellets? Uh, Supreme. Fruity or natural? Um, they're the fruity ones. The fruit, they're they, fruit shaped. I know they that. smell like you could add milk and enjoy them yourself. Maybe, yeah. 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 <laughs> we do have your bird diet at home. Okay. And um, I'm feeding it to my parrots. I'm trying to get him to kind of feed it to Kinder too. So. <laughs> okay. And so the seasonal feeding system is what you're referring to? Or no, the pellets. We still oh, need yeah, to pellets. get the recipes for the seasonal feeding. Okay. So. Is there a reason you haven't done the pellets? Our pellets? He just really likes his current food. I haven't, okay. like I, when we first got him, he was like on a seed diet from the <laughs> thing. And so we moved him over to pellets and he just really loves them. Like the little banana shapes and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like he'll pick out like specific flavors and everything. It's awesome. Okay. <laughs> so. <laughs> I think I know who might do it more. <laughs> <laughs> so what's your goal today? What, well, what would you like to see today? And then maybe overall over the next year? I would like to be able to pick him up without him running at me and lunging and okay. fighting. Um, or just find some kind of positive way to interact with him today. And okay. then um, I would like to be able to pick him up and kind of have a nice relationship with him over the next year. Uh, Kathy. Were those just your goals or did you have specifics that you wanted to? Uh, he gets along great with me. Okay. Uh, it's, it's pretty much exclusively like she has mm -hmm. a bit of a disconnect relationship so gotcha. we're okay. here yeah. only for that. Cool. Does he like being pet at all? Yeah. Yeah. Bye so scratches, yeah. By me. <laughs> he'll let me do it sometimes and he'll turn around and bite really fast. Yes. The cleaner the diet, like if it's just seasonal feeding system and then they get treats for training, mm -hmm. the cleaner it is, the better result you're going to get from that treat because the treat's going to have a higher value. Definitely want to still lean towards... Um, Getting clean just a healthy diet, diet clean your diet, yeah. yeah. That's gonna make a big difference. Okay. Just overall for mood, for hormones, for everything. Have yeah. you guys tried the mash yet? No. Here, you guys can have it back. This is one of their recipes. It's their Thank fall you. recipe. You'll want to freeze most of that and only thaw a little bit for a few days. Okay. But then once you see if you likes it, then you already know that you're investing in a good book because you've seen that he likes it. Awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you, Heather. Really appreciate it. Uh, what perch or tea stand do you think that he'll be most receptive to using, or did you guys bring your own? We kind of brought our own, but it's not. It's it's low ghetto. <laughs> <So, yeah. laughs> oh, yeah. It's a ladder. Uh, what does it say? What's the box? It's a sparring. Um, oh. <laughs> so the issue, Jamie, was one person bird and hormones is what I wrote. Mm -hmm. um, I would love to see. Did you say? I'm sorry, because my notes are. Jacob. Did you say you've done any target training or no no training? Uh, lots of training. Lots of training. Okay. What training have you done? Uh, step up, step down. He does a few tricks. He can spin. Uh, he can uh, do pretty wings. Okay. Can we like see that. what the repertoire looks like? Sure, sure. And then for Hermione, you were, it was, you were trying to get the step up or just the relationship. Okay. Yeah. You hang out? Hang out, Bert? <laughs> He's like, dude, it's been two hours since I've eaten now. He's a big shoulder bird. <laughs> yeah. And does he fly much at all? Uh, no, he can't fly. Uh, well, he can, but not 
very well. He's okay. just got the show feathers. Okay. <laughs> he can still get across the room. Yeah. Okay. Step up. Good job. He's, he's got a little bit of fright here. <laughs> Stage fright. He spin. He spin. Good job. Good job. Yeah. Lots of verbal cues. That's I don't use clickers or anything like that. But he's kind of frighty. Yeah. Like loud noises. Clicker scare him a little. Yeah. <laughs> the scare him. What about the cough flying right over his cage? <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> Seems to have settled down since then. <laughs> yeah. I'm pretty bird. So I want to pause everybody right there. Did you notice the heightened when we all laughed? Mm -hmm. The energy of the bird got heightened. Mm -hmm. They really mirror our own energy. So I just thought it was a good example to show there. Yeah. You do pretty wings. I just have pretty to stop being funny. Good job. Good job. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> uh, have you seen the size of that blue one? <laughs> <laughs> Right now. I'm going around. So I think I want to see on a tea sound what her interaction looks like. Okay. Go for it. Um, can we use it's that right to down stand? There. Yeah, it's right down no. there. Yeah, of course. <laughs> so if you can go ahead and put your bird on there, then sure. I want to see what the interaction can look like after that. Can you step up? Good job. Hi, Kinder. Step up. Now he doesn't bite me, of course. Treat, 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 treat. treat. I was too slow at that time. He's going to be your best friend now. Should I still treat him or is it too late? Still treat him. Okay. Oh. Treat but him now we're in a bad <laughs> <spot. laughs> right. so there's So you can see training super dynamic. So in the moment, I love that. you miss the moment to reinforce the really perfect mm -hmm. chance, right? Yeah. And then when you went to treat him, you were trying to get a step up first, which he didn't like, so you gave him a treat while he was angry. So if you break down like that, you're like, ooh, I just reinforced him refusing being to step angry. up and being angry. Yeah. Um, are, you, are you able to reset him back to the perch? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Can I have a treat? Yeah. Step up. <laughs> no, I, I would know. rather not. <laughs> he loves being with me more than anything. Okay. You step up. Good job. Yeah. I don't fill him up too much either. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so since he's so receptive to everything you do, just for the next ten minutes, I don't want you to give a treat. Okay. I See, I'll, I'll like to kind of read what he does or doesn't do with you not treating. Okay. Okay. So this time, before you do it, I want to see if you can get to step up for a treat and put him back on the perch. Okay. Can you step up? Good job, Jim. Nice. So, by rewarding him the treat on the perch, mm -hmm. you're helping avoid the shoulder rushing issue. Okay. So, what that does is, when he stepped up and didn't get a treat, he did whatever he wanted. Mm -hmm. But if you condition him that you pick him up, and immediately put him back down and give him a treat, he will pretty quickly... Once you pick him up, he'll be looking at the perch because he knows that's where his treat's coming from. Oh, okay. And it'll redirect his mind towards go back here to get the treat mm -hmm. versus tear into you or run to your shoulder or do any unwanted behavior. You're directing him into a way that you can get the behavior you want more of. Okay. Which even though right now she's still a brief step up, but mm -hmm. it's a step up without being torn into. Exactly. So. And then it's, his reward is not only leaving you, but also getting a treat on the perch. Okay. Should I try it again? I think so. Do you see any indicator that would say otherwise? No. Okay. He seems pretty calm and good right now. Step up. Good job. All right. You step off. Nice job, Kinder. Nice. And then to, to possibly improve that in the future, you may need to show him the treat to go back to the perch. If he's like, because there was like a brief moment of hesitancy, right? Mm -hmm. He was like, should I go? Should I not? And if he knew the treat was over there, he'd look at the treat and be like, oh yeah, it's back there. Okay. So it's not necessarily a lure as much as it is a subtle reminder that if he goes there, he gets a treat. Okay, cool. Really? He's still eating? Step up? Hmm. I didn't like that one. I noticed in the last one that he went deep that. first. Yeah, it did go a little harder. Um, 
just getting too all far. I don't know. I, I'm looking through the lens. The last Let's, one I thought can I see he would treats? speak yeah. first. The second hand can redirect. You can actually see it more magnified with the macaw. Mm -hmm. When he would go for my hand, I was trying to step up, I'd move my other one closer. And he was like, uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> so you could, he couldn't be biting both hands at the same time. So mm -hmm. sometimes that extra hand can help. It, it looks, it's probably easiest to explain as a lure, but it's more of a attention redirector. So you're keeping him from biting my hand, and it's forcing me to really direct where that attention is. The thing to be careful of is like taunting and pulling it back in a way. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if I doing feel like that. I do that because I get scared of these guys. Yeah. Me. Um, so. That might be the spot to pause that. I don't know. What do you think? If you're thinking that, then yeah. It's hard when you can through the he, camera. He seems like he escalated really quickly. Yeah. Is that consistent? Like he's good, then he's bad, and then he's horrible? Um, her. with her, her <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. I, I would say that, I mean, usually it's very initial. Like I was surprised that she got that first step up as easy as yeah. he gave it. To and that's what I mean here, like changing food, water, shelter. Mm -hmm. So like food, we don't really have right now. Mm -hmm. Like I, you're saying, I'm, and I see that he's willing to eat the safflowers, but on the perfect diet, mm -hmm. she now has like, here's gold. If he's that willing to do it full with a sugary diet, mm -hmm. then he's going to be super stoked to earn it when he's on a really clean diet. So I think that'll really help. Um, I think we all seem to figure out what his number one and two favorite treats are, mm -hmm. and make sure that you're no longer given the number one favorite treat, because you are the number one favorite treat. Um, so if you're also giving the favorite food, mm -hmm. then she's got no chance. Okay. But if you... Uh, that's why I was saying, like, you know, for the next ten minutes, let's not give him an actual treat from you. Okay. That'll help us be able to see what where we can get a little bit more reward for her. And he's like, come on, don't they do something? Oh, uh, come here. Man, yeah. we we're having the episode of perching today. <laughs> there you go. You okay? Oh, that was super <laughs> sexual. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so, so there's, it's interesting in the, you know, two person dynamic, there's a lot that the favorite person can do to jeopardize it for everybody else. Mm -hmm. And the bummer is it's usually things that we do to show our affection. Mm -hmm. So um, Yeah, that's that's for me a big part of it. I don't wanna like lose a lot of those uh, behaviors yeah. that I have with them. But. Yeah, and I think I mean to be realistic it's it's gotta be something where you you, you find what that balance is. Mm -hmm. Um you're definitely triggering hormones and it's it would make it so that long term he's not gonna be okay with her mm -hmm. and um are you have you read the five languages of love uh no i haven't you come over here it's definitely a good book you should read it so has anybody else here read it yes. you've read it okay is it a bird book or is it a human? <laughs> uh, human. I've, I've approached the author to do an interview with him and they declined it, but, but um, yeah, I know, would have been great. So The Five Languages of Love uh, is a book that is written by a therapist or psychologist kind of mix. Yeah, and he, he basically describes, so step away from the bird world for a minute for humans, how we get and receive love. And there's basically five ways. And it's through physical touch, acts of service, quality time, gifts, or words of affirmation. And I found a direct correlation with people's love languages. It's like we all have one where it's, we, we give in one primary way and we receive in a primary way. And sometimes they're the same, like I'm physical touch, Jamie is not physical touch. <laughs> so having read that book, we're like, oh, okay, well, here's how we find that balance. And um, I find that there's a huge correlation with bird owners and showing their love language. So if I had to guess, it's your love language is physical touch. If you had to pick one of those five. Yeah, I, I suppose so. So what that does is it makes it so that you're wanting to show your affection to this bird through physical touch. And the problem is that that, to make you feel fulfilled, is actually triggering hormones in the bird. Mm -hmm. And so we hear it a lot um, with 
uh, it's usually elderly women buy the birds uh, lots of toys to show that they love it. And it's like buying the affection through gifts and they want the bird to love them. It's like, well, why doesn't he love me? I bought him all the toys. Mm -hmm. Or it's like, I don't know why he won't let me pet him. It's like, they have a different love language than we do. Yeah, and there's they also love... the acts of service one where people really feel like they're the provider, they're the caretaker, but their significant other is barely home mm -hmm. and they're the ones doing everything. Yeah. And they're just like, I don't get why the bird doesn't like me. Like I do everything for that bird. That's acts of service. Yeah. So they're showing an acts of service and wanting to feel loved back for it but the bird but the bird doesn't like them doesn't get it. The, it the bird the bird's love language is to gain pleasure or avoid pain and like with sunny the blue and gold macaw that's a rescue that i'm working with i every time i i because i'm physical touch right and like i want this bird to accept touch so every time i would give him a treat i'd give him a little kiss on the head mm -hmm. and i would time it so that he's eating the treat at the exact moment his head gets touched Mm -hmm. If I had a third hand, I'd use a hand instead of my face. But, um, <laughs> but the idea was, it's a little bit, it's, it's not technically neuro-linguistic programming, but it's the best reference I can give. But it's reprogramming his brain to associate that like every, the sensation and the dopamine hit of treats is exact same time every time as the touch of the head. So eventually I can just touch his head and he gets that same rush as giving a treat. Okay. Um, so... I think for you to get what you want out of this or what she wants out of this, you have to recognize that, that, that if that is your love language, that maybe we can just accept petting on the head, which is okay, mm -hmm. but anything down past the neck onto the back or the beak, all that is like, like I said, it's like middle school dating, right? It's just, you're just going to frustrate the bird. You yeah. give all the wrong signs and can't fulfill it. Yeah. You, you can see like when he gets scared, he comes straight to me, like I'm yeah. safe person yeah and honestly that's really good too for especially like outdoors if he ever gets outdoors he's gonna be looking for you because mm -hmm. like i like to see that in free flight students where if their birds terrified they go to the person instead it takes off and goes down the hall and then you got to go figure out okay this is outdoors where'd he go mm -hmm. right you want the fear response be to come to you which is, that's good yeah. um but a lot of things that that the two person dynamic can affect as you're seeing is, you know, triggering accidental hormones, uh, or like in Jamie's in my case, if she overtrains Jinx, Jinx is aggressive to me. Mm -hmm. And because, uh, like in the family friendly course, we talk about the 60, 40 rule mm -hmm. and how, are you familiar with that part? Uh, I've read a description of it. Yeah. Okay. So the 60, 40 rule is basically, if you picture a teeter totter, this is balancing perfect world is like 50 50 right? like you said in the beginning like ah she can just have like 50 percent of my relationship and that would be that'd be ideal mm -hmm. to get there you're at 100 and zero right now like this scale mm -hmm. is super tilted mm -hmm. and so we need to start having her do the training and you're not doing training she's giving the favorite treats you're not giving the favorite treats she's maybe doing more caretaking you're not doing the caretaking we need to pull it so it's like 50 50 again mm -hmm. and then once you get it there it's a constant balance between 60 40 both sides so once it hits 60 push the other person back up. Once that hits 60, push the other person back up. And it's constantly in that, in that range. And that's where you'll have the, the most family friendly parrot with the least amount of one person bird issues. Okay. It'll also help diminish the hormones because now this bird no longer only associates you as its mate. It, um, it starts to be more balanced as a flock dynamic instead of a duo. Okay. And so you can still, the other thing is like, I know you're concerned about losing the relationship you have. Mm -hmm. I think based on our experience, you won't lose it. You'll, if anything, just enhance it for her.